Ladies and gentlemen, Haskin yeah, in the building! Yeah. What's up? Yes, What's sir! Up? How we doing, man? I'm doing better now. I appreciate you, sir. How are you today? Oh, my God. I'm good. This fucking setup was not... It wasn't working. It was tricky, it but, me. but you figured it out. It's awesome. I figured it out. So I was downstairs in my studio, and my studio is mainly just a uh, studio computer, and it is honestly a piece of garbage. It lets me record my vocals. And this is my good streaming PC, but my microphone isn't up here. My SM7B is not up here. So I could have been all professional with my microphone like you. And uh, I just, I had everything set up looking butamous downstairs. But here we are. Butamous. I like that. You sound golden. Don't worry. Uh, for those that may not know you, Justin, can you please properly introduce yourself? Let me know where about in the world you are at this moment. Plug and promote everything that you'd like to promote everything um so i am justin haskin uh i'm from desolist and before you fall was the the main band that i started in when i was a young teen growing up um some of you guys may know me from lost conduit as well but uh as of right now i'm mainly kind of doing haskin and promoting this year bitch that comes out tonight at midnight tonight masterpiece tonight. how long did you take you to uh to actually go from you're in the studio and doing track one to now you have it in hand and you have a release date. What is the time in between? I don't want to talk about it. A long time. So, so this this project was originally just kind of like a side thing as uh, some of my bands were kind of going on hiatus. And uh, at first it was just going to be a studio project. And I started with just one or two tracks. And it was actually in 2020 and we're at 2023 right now. So like Season Performer and Dazed and Confused and some of the first singles that I put out were 2020. And uh, then I turned it into a five song EP. And then things started feeling a little bit more serious. I kind of wanted to try and take it into a live setting and still haven't done that as of now. But uh, once I did the five song EP, I hated that it was an EP and I wanted to release an album. I didn't want to write 10 all new tracks, so I just wrote five more. And so now it is five songs plus five songs. So a lot of these are uh, previously released. It's probably going to be a somewhat anticlimactic release because a lot of them were released as singles or as the EP prior. But now it's, it's all pretty and it's in a case and stuff. So it makes me feel better and more... Uh, finalized with the project and uh, I'm working on a new one as of now but we'll we'll talk about that as as we go do you do you DIY yourself as far as production and all that or is there somebody that you were sending your vocal tracks to so I, I track everything here um, I was gonna show you my studio downstairs but here I am um, so I track everything downstairs in my studio I, uh, I invested a good chunk of money into like a real nice vocal booth and uh, the, the first half of it, when it was an EP, I was living in a different house, and I, I recorded it in an open room, but I kind of had one of those like little uh, barricade things that you're kind of just sticking your your face in. But uh, as time went on, I, I really wanted like a nice uh, vocal booth. So uh, the production throughout all 10 sound exactly the same. I kind of got lucky that it still sounds just as good. But um, I have Connor from Bro Job and Omega Virus. He is mixing all of this, and uh, he wrote all the instrumentals for this album, and uh, he, he did a killer job. He's become a really good friend of mine, and uh, he let me be very uh, OCD about this album and uh, let me go beyond doing revisions, for sure. Some of the songs had way too many versions, and he killed it on every single one of them. It was just like, can you make this vocal thing louder and that? And it was just... He was awesome though. Could how, not how did you how did you anymore. first link up with Connor? Did you just reach out to him and say, "Hey, I love your production. Would you be interested?" Or like, how did you initially set up that first conversation? Well, I I was doing Lost Conduit with a guy named Drew. Um, when all, my band started going on hiatus, I put out like statuses saying that I kind of wanted to be a vocalist for hire. I kind of felt stuck and unable to do um, you know vocals as much as I wanted to. So uh, I started doing a lot of paid work. And Drew from Lost Conduit, he hit me up, and he was like a, a solo instrumentalist that just wrote. A bunch of music and had never really been in a legit band and uh, now that he's an adult he could afford to do it the right way and you know kind of invest in you know the 
the high end production and like a lot of guest vocalists outside of uh, you know hiring me and uh, he had actually got Connor to do the production. So throughout doing the Lost Conduit album was where I met Connor and we did the whole album and then at the ending of the album I was like I got this really weird idea I kind of want to do some like rap metal stuff would you have any interest in writing some music for me and me sending you some vocals over time and uh, you mixing it and seeing how everything goes and he sent me a couple songs um, funny I've never told anyone this season performer which is the main song on this album I actually recorded to a different instrumental a completely boring very plain beat and I recorded the whole song and I knew that that wasn't what it was going to be. It was just a very, yeah, at first I probably thought that's what it was going to be. But as time went by, um, Connor started writing me all these tracks that were so much better. And I was like, would you have interest in rewriting the instrumental and using my already recorded vocals? And uh, I'll never forget, I was in the, the studio. So, you, did, so you didn't have to re-record these vocals. He just no. took the time signature and the key and just kind of like re did it dang that is that's cool just just with that song yeah. so uh the the other nine you know i had written to the instrumentals that he had wrote me but uh yeah season performer it was i still have the the version of it somewhere i should probably show someone at some point because it is not the season performer that people know now for sure but uh yeah, I, I was in the studio with Desilus recording a single that still fucking hasn't come out. It's been two or three years. But uh, I, I got the message. He was like, hey, so here's here's the song. I don't know if, you guys, if you're going to like it. And I'm like, guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to go run in the car and check this out. And I just cranked it. I was like, this is so much cooler than I would have anticipated because it was weird. I, I was love hearing, when that happens. I was hearing all the vocals that I was you know, recording and was so familiar with, but I was hearing a different song, you know, so it was uh, – it was a really, really cool situation how that ended up. But, yeah, that's how I met Connor. Now that the that the album is out, well, at midnight, um, and I'm sure you're going to be promoting that heavily and possibly doing shows, blah, 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 selling the album. Is, do, you, do you anticipate it being hard to balance the band and the solo stuff simultaneously? Uh, yes and no. So uh, I had a kid two years ago, and my drummer of Desolus Congratulations. also had a kid. Thank you. And uh, he had a kid more recent than I did. And, uh, you know, th we were kind of on a hiatus before all that. And uh, I never really wanted to stop. I instantly dove into doing Lost Conduit and started doing this solo project. And I also did an album with uh, another artist uh, called Black Spire. And uh, there's a couple singles out with that as well. But I, I did 11 or 12 tracks with them as well. So uh, throughout me having a kid, I still did... 11 or 12 tracks with Black Spire. I did uh, a 10 track album with Lost Conduit and we just put out another single. I did these 10 tracks for Haskin. I have a bunch of new Haskin material that is not a part of this. I've written honestly probably more than I ever have, especially with uh, you know getting a little bit older and having a kid. I knew it was kind of now or never type of thing. So I just started writing more than I ever had. So uh, Desolist is still kind of we're, we're trying to get things back together. We lost our guitar player. He joined a, a started a band called Never Bloom, and he was the one that wrote a lot of like the skeleton of our music. And uh, we got another buddy that I've known for honestly 10, 11, 12 years, and uh, he's joined Desilus, and we've had a handful of practices with him. It's gone really well. We've written quite a bit on Discord. Uh, I've never really written on Discord before, not in person, so it was pretty cool to be able to do it online. And uh, he's he's killing it he's he's writing really well with us but as time goes on you know um i'm still always taking care of my kid and you know writing my stuff and you know my drummer always having you know his, his newborn so as much as i i want to continue desolist it's not really in my hands um i've proved that i am willing to always write whatever comes my way um you know between desolist Black Spire, Lost Conduit, my first band, Before You Fall, Haskin. I've juggled many projects, and I've never really allowed anything to get in the way of that. I've always, I, I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a musician, so uh, I'll always make time for it. So when Desolist is ready to continue, that is, you know, my main band project. And as time has gone by, this has kind of been my main project as the time being, so... Oh, uh, Desilus and Haskin are, are uh, they're always going to be my bread and butter. Um, I love Lost Conduit. Drew is amazing, and uh, I'll always want to write with Drew as well. So, 
Did you remember to bring the hot sauce? You want to know something funny? I almost started the stream holding a thing of hot sauce just to see if you would get it. <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get it. We ask everyone to bring some hot sauce. Can you show us which one you brought? Uh, I don't even know if I really have any. Let me go check. Wait, wait. Before What's you do. That? Wait. Hold on a second. Hold up. <laughs> I was going to ask him for the trivia so I could look it up like a cousin gets it. It's too fast. It's too fast for me. I think we're going to jam Go With The Flow. Go With The Flow and The Season Performer are probably my two favorites. But Go With The Flow, I think, is a really good example. Damn it! thought I had some Taco Bell fire sauce laying around, but I cannot find it. No worries. So we'll, we'll, say, we'll say, is that a beer in your hand right there? This is a Dr. Pepper. Sir. Okay, so we'll say if I stump you, you got to chug a whole bunch. Not the whole can, but a whole bunch of Dr. Pepper. Oh, I'll, I'll chug the whole can. You'll man. chug the whole f***ing can. Hell yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What? Uh, I have... Let's do some trivia. What What TV or, sh or uh, what movie or TV show have you seen the most? Well, if I ask you trivia on this movie or TV show, you will not get stumped. Um, I'll probably get stumped because there's so much information on it, but I am a mega big Game of Thrones fan. Game of Thrones heard. Is it okay? I love Season Performer, but one of my absolute favorites is Go With The Flow. Is it okay if I play that one? Yeah, go for it, man. Hell yeah. We're hanging out with Haskin. If you guys go on YouTube right there, hit that sub button, support him. That'd be awesome. It'd be a hell of a lot cooler if you did. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. Album comes out at midnight. It's called Masterpiece. Go With The Flow. Game of Thrones trivia. Give me a second. Look it up. That's right down at my house. That spot too? With the candles right there? So the only thing it's kind of funny, this this video was shot in three different days. The green bridge, I guess it would be green, is like a thousand feet from my house. Everything else was shot in San Francisco. Um I went there once and I shot a bunch of stuff, way too public. I shot in front of like hundreds of people and I did not have like a videographer with me. I just set up a tripod and everyone's probably looking at me looking like I'm crazy. And uh, I got a I got a really good idea of what I wanted to do and came back a different day and reshot a bunch of it. Oh, it's it's this is one of my favorites because it's you have you show really good mic control while you're performing it and it has just really good layering and it's heavy on top of a piano, which is this one like always stood out to me. Thank you. It's really cool. Do you have any do you have any unusual like vocal warm-up tricks that you do before before you record or before you play a set? Uh not not nothing really unusual. Um I really probably just start out like a real basic low scream. I know everyone's voice is kind of built differently. Sometimes certain screams are easier and certain are harder. Like a real lazy low scream is like the most comfortable to me. And so I'll just do real, real lazy and then just kind of add a little bit more oomph into it and drink a bunch of water and then do a little bit stronger, drink a bunch of water and like slowly rise up to like a mid scream, drink a bunch of water, do that mid scream a little bit, you know, harsher, drink a bunch of water and slowly get up to a high scream. And once I get like my high screams going, then I, I kind of feel comfortable going everywhere. So it just starts with the low scream, real lazy, lots of water in between, and all the way up to high. Hell yeah, so multiple bottles are consumed while warming up. Water yeah. bottles. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> this could be... You want to know something funny? So speaking of uh, bottles, uh, I uh, I know it seems a little uh, wrong to be on local band Smoke Out, but I'm uh, completely sober these days. Oh, that's so okay. I, uh, I, I, was, I respect uh, that. I respect that. That's awesome. I was like the biggest pot smoker on planet earth for like 12 13 years straight and 
me and my girlfriend kind of decided that uh, she she was a big drinker and uh, decided that if she would stop drinking that I would stop smoking and we kind of did it together and it's been a year and a half surprisingly so I, I congratulations don't know how that happened. thank you I can remember things now which is weird <laughs> <laughs> well this this could be the most important question I've asked you this entire interview right here in Game of Thrones oh no what is the name of the boy Arya is playing with who later dies when oh, Nymeria attacks Joffrey. He's the, the butcher's boy. Little ginger dude. I don't know. <laughs> Do you Shit. remember his name, though? Red. No, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> that is not correct. The answer is Micah. That's what I said, dude. Why didn't you... I, you just didn't hear me say it. I, I, I missed it. I missed it. I'm sorry. Enjoy your Dr. Pepper... <laughs> Uh, do you, uh, we can jam one more song? Should we do season yeah. performer, or you want to do something that we haven't jammed on a regular basis yet? Uh, season performer and Days of Confused. I feel like those first three are are the the best ones. Um, I shot the videos for Go with the Flow, Word Technician, Black Magic, and Fly High, my friend. And uh, as much as I'm like stoked that I filmed those, uh, totally stands out that they were DIY and. Uh, I have a, these two hold a special place in my heart just because I love the, the video production as well. Is is this one where you were like going back and forth with Connor? You're like, oh, just, just a little tweak right there. And then, um, Black Magic was one of them. Um, you you got to think I'm crazy. I shouldn't even admit this, but I'm pretty sure like Black Magic had like, he, he, Connor would always label them as like Black Magic V1, V2. Right, so right, right. Sure we, we got to like version 23. <laughs> It was nuts. I I, I, I feel you. I'm that way regarding our like side project stuff uh, with with yeah. our buddy Ozzy Bear. I'll be like, yeah, yo, I, can I, you just I, do this one little thing right there? And then 17 more of those. <laughs> yeah, I think Hello probably had like 16 or 17 versions as well. So thank you, Connor. I really appreciate it. It makes me so much more proud of it because I look back on some uh, early Before You Fall tracks, my first band. And although I was super young, I remember thinking in the studio, like, I should probably redo that track or uh, or that uh, that vocal take, or I should, you know, tell my producer he should do this with whatever. And uh, I still hear it. And some of those songs came out 2010, 2011. So 12, 13 years later, I still know the things I wish that I changed. So having Connor have my back and have me be able to change. Production in general awesome. has, like, changed in those years, too. So, yeah. We're hanging out with Haskin. This one's called Season Performer Album. Comes out at midnight. Please check it out. Support him. I got a couple more for you after this. When I be taking the stage, these fuckers acting like I'm not owning this place. They get in my face, but I am winning the race. Trying to take me out, but can't be erased. I kept to myself full. Everybody was gutted. Only for my hate and was left and dying. Never to me to be black to see. Was my fault, but no. Season performer right there. I did add him to the poll. Lizzie's right there. Go with the flow. Let's try this Game of Thrones one more time. Oh, no. I was just, you you picked funny. it. We, I know. We just watched the whole season, the, the whole show a couple months ago, and I instantly started watching it again. So I have almost, this is like my third time rewatching it, so I better get some of these. You got it. This is the last one, though. Who actually founded the House of Stark? The House Stark. Who was the original founder? What is his name? He also started building the wall and founded the Night's Watch. The fucking founder of the Night's Watch? Shit. I think we got you again. Yeah, I think you... Gotcha, bitch! (laughs) (laughs) I love your sound clips. (laughs) It, It is... 
Brandon the Builder Stark is the name of the Not Bob the Builder? It's Brandon the Builder right Dude, there. I thought it was Bob the Builder the whole time. It is not, unfortunately. <laughs> But uh dude, so so uh do we can we anticipate some more music videos uh now that the album's coming out in the in the future or what what would you like us to know with the remainder of twenty twenty three? Um because obviously the album's out, the, the promotion doesn't stop. It it continues and it ramps up in certain different ways. What are you allowed to tell us? So I got a new lyric video coming out tomorrow for uh... <laughs> Dr. That Pepper. Song, specifically, yeah. <laughs> For a song called Potential in Me. Um, it's like the one song that's on the album that I felt was extremely strong and didn't have a video. So uh, it's it's a very last second video. Um, it was just something that I actually got done this week. Um, so I, I just needed something to push with the with the rest of the album instead of just be like, hey, the album's out and that's it. Because obviously I, I wanted a, another music video. Uh I was on the fence about shooting a music video for Potential and Me and just doing another DIY video, but I, I kind of want to move past the DIY videos. I feel like um, Season Performer and Days of Confused, having them like a, be a good production uh, stands out so much more than the DIY videos. Um, and I, I was stressing myself out with edi editing them. Some of these videos were just taking me way too long, and I would much rather just throw my money at someone. Not that I have money, but it's just such an easier thing to just shoot it, leave, and in a couple weeks have the link sent to you and be super stoked on it, you know? So just the lyric video for tomorrow. But for the rest of 2023, um, I I didn't want to make it seem like this album was like an anticlimactic release because so many of the songs are already out. But I already kind of have my eyes set on new things. Um, I just needed to get it out so I could move on to those new things. So I almost have another album ready. Um, none of it is mixed. None of it is edited. But it's I got eight songs written right now, and I I own the the eight instrumentals. So so much of the second album is kind of already you know m more than just in the works cool uh, like if you if, yeah if you were to hear it now you it would almost feel like it's another finished album um it's kind of a different style i don't want to give away too much but i, I stopped screaming so much uh, i still scream but it's kind of more like a like aggressive yelling so it's more it, it, it's less demon like and more audible and i feel like will be accepted more by uh, normal people outside of just the metal scene um i feel like the metal scene is very on the fence about this whole thing uh when i first released season performer is the first song i released do those metal groups on facebook had no fucking idea what to think i mean everyone was either just calling me a ghost main ripoff which i don't get at all i i, I don't listen to ghost main but anytime i have i'm like I understand it's like the same idea, but it just doesn't it sound anything like it to me. And my girlfriend and I just always laugh about it because I get it all the time. And I just I don't I, I don't know. I just don't understand it. But um, I'm definitely not changing because of people not necessarily accepting it and just being different. I kind of enjoy being somewhat controversial, but I'm more excited for the new style that I'm doing. So. I'm kind of throwing all my eggs in one basket and I'm deciding on one song to debut of, of this next album to try and just drop the new style on the world and just kind of see what happens. Um, I'm putting a lot of money into a music video. I don't know where I'm going to shoot it yet. I don't know who I'm going to shoot it with, but I've been saving a lot of money and I have two songs out of the eight that I know one of them will be the video. I, I haven't decided which. I've sent Maybe you can do like a you you book someone from a.m. to p.m. and you knock out two in one day special. I thought about that, but I also don't know if I can afford the the product that I want. I I wish that it could just be so huge, you know. Uh, terrible example, and I know it's very controversial, and you you may not even like him. But are are, are you following Falling Universe at all? Like the new music video that they put out clearly is like a fifty thousand dollar budget, and I'm just like, God damn, I wish I had the funds to do. I would say like more that than stuff. that, having seen the making of. But yes, I know what you're saying. Watch the world I, burn. I, I, 
I would love to just have <laughs> the money to invest in myself and, you know, having a kid and, you know, a 10 year old stepson as well. You know, we, the bills add up, up. the bills add up. Bill, I get it. Bills add up. And I have spent way too much money even on this guy. And, um, I know I won't even get close to making my money back, but maybe someday, maybe this next CD, the the style is more accepting, and maybe it'll do well enough to where I can maybe make money instead of just invest it and lose it. So I'm a very passionate musician, and I don't have a big problem with investing. Um, I've invested money into music my whole life while working, you know, barely over minimum wage jobs. So I uh, I've always taken that risk, but I would love for one day for it to pay off. Even though I know I won't stop, even if it doesn't, it would just be such a cherry on top for everything I've worked for. So I love I'm throwing it. all I'm throwing all my money into one one video for a single, and I honestly want to release it just in the next couple months. So it'll be a quick follow up to this album, but that's that's what the I hustle got, mentality. We got two yeah. two final questions for you. A quick one, then a kind of a serious one. My bad. Is there a song? I lost you. No, I'm good. Is there a song dedicated to Calvin? <laughs> on the next album or this one? I don't know. It just says, is there a song dedicated to Calvin on the album? Yes. So on this album, Fly High, My Friend, if you, I see you're on my YouTube channel right now. If you were to just click the right arrow, Fly High, My Friend is uh, the one that's dedicated for Calvin. Um, so it's, yeah, it's that second one right there. Um there was a song called Calvin Kelly on the Desolist album. There's Fly High, My Friend on this Haskin album. And I already have another ha uh, Haskin song that's dedicated to him. So I think kind of in my mind, I will always write a song for him for every release. Um, it, for those of you that don't know, my homeboy Calvin right here, he was uh, the drummer and the clean vocalist for uh, Before You Fall, our first band. Me and him you know, grew up musically together, and he was really the best friend I, I ever had in my life. And unfortunately he was killed in uh, 2015. So uh, surprisingly it's already been eight Sorry. years and I, I just, I just don't know how that's happened. Th thank you, man. Uh, I really don't know how it's already been eight years, but yeah, we wrote one with Desolist, wrote one with Haskin. I'm already writing another one. So I think no matter what project I'm in, if I'm ever doing more stuff with Desolist, more stuff that is like my project, you know, Lost Conduit is a paid project. Black Spire is a paid project. Anything that's a paid project, it's not super personal to me. So I won't do so much Calvin stuff, but uh, I'll probably write about Calvin my whole life you know if I'm if I'm writing music 20 years from now I guarantee there will still be Calvin songs so uh, he's, just, he's my best homie dude uh, there's nothing else to it I uh, I owe that dude every bit of music credit that I have me and him talked about music every day of, my, of our fucking lives we took apart every little detail of our favorite songs and would talk about the details of music that most people won't talk about with each other so uh, I love that strong yeah, strongest bond with music I've ever had with anyone. So uh, I will always try and do my due diligence and write songs for him. Really quick on the side, I'm going to close the queue for the mods. Final question is, of have you ever made a serious band mistake? Where like maybe in uh, one of your first bands or a side project or just a feature, you, or you, you made a band mistake that you don't want uh, a garage band that's just starting out to to make you don't want them to make the same mistake um i had a real big ego when i was younger still do but it's more of a healthy ego now um be confident but don't be confident to where you're burning bridges because you know i, I mean even today some of my old band members may think the way that I am now is no different than the way that I was before, just because I don't hang out with them. I don't talk with them. You know, people, uh, mature people will understand that everyone grows up, but some people, you know, will remember you the way they knew you. And, um, you know, sometimes first impressions are important as much as that sucks. Um, be confident, but don't be an egotistical maniac like i probably was in before you fall it's <laughs> good advice justin i always forget to do this it's only the second time in the, the entire month probably month and a half that i remember to do this but can you do a plug for me 
Just uh, yes. just just call out yourself, call out uh, any project you're in, and just end with you're watching local band smoke out. Something 10, 15 seconds Absolutely. long. Absolutely. Take yes. it away whenever you're ready. Hello, I am Justin Haskin. I am releasing this album masterpiece tonight. You are watching local band smoke out. Woo! Perfect. I I, I heard the repeat of the woo and i'm like yeah i can hear how much louder that probably was <laughs> no you're good I'll, I'll clean it up a little bit dude this was fun right. man i appreciate it congrats on the release masterpiece coming out at midnight uh, i've loved every single song i've heard from yours uh, of yours which is only three or four but the cool thing is you're one of our patreon supporters and we're going to be able to deep dive all your tunes explore chit chat some more maybe uh in a couple months from now we can do a follow-up and uh that that video that you're referring to the uh somewhat budgeted video we'll be able to pick apart that and uh chat some more and if that's okay with you absolutely no that sounds great dude congrats again thank you so much for kicking it for a little while today i appreciate yeah. you man ladies and gentlemen Haskin! Yeah, hell yeah. Bro, thank you so much cheers homie absolute pleasure thank you have a good one guys cheers